I was looking at the last PW50 video I uploaded. It was over 14 minutes long, and all I did was remove the flywheel and the stator. I really appreciate you watching that one, if you did. If not, it's a great video. Don't watch <laughs> it. Today, hopefully, we'll make a little bit more progress. Look at the big box of nectarines. This is why the videos run long. Look at all of these beautiful nectarines that we just gathered from a tree Jennifer planted a couple of years ago. We thought we'd be out of our house by now. We were supposed to be out 10 days ago, 12 days ago, but we're still here. I'll explain it all in the future. But the silver lining of that is that we got to stay long enough for the nectarines to ripen. This is our first harvest from that tree. It's a very young tree. Do we have a picture of the tree? Come for the motorcycle videos, stay for the farming. Today I want to split apart these cases and get the crankshaft and main bearing assembly in my hand so I can investigate it. I think that the rod bearing is good. I'll be able to tell for sure once it's all taken apart. The main bearings, as we talked about before, are toasted, but hopefully we can make something work between this engine and the one over here that I have. So first thing today is removing this primary gear nut. Normally, I would just stick a pinny in here to wedge these gears in position and then take it off, but this configuration is a little bit abnormal. There's a rubber cushioning system between the crankshaft and the gear so that even if the rod is held still, these gears can move a little bit. I'm not sure why they did that, but that's the way it is and I'm hesitant to apply a lot of torque to that joint. So what I'll do instead is use a couple of free paint sticks that I've got to keep the piston from going down all the way. And that combined with the penny wedged in there should hold everything in place sturdy enough to not break anything, but also allow me to remove this pesky nut. So here we go. Well, my beam broke. I'll try again. Double or nothing? We'll double or nothing. Mm, that didn't work. I think these have about the same tinsel strength as a wheat thin. How about an impact wrench? I have an impact wrench. I think it would work on here, but it's in storage. So, let's go to storage. All right, we'll put the impact to it now. The reason I'm comfortable with the impact wrench working against the rubber bumpers in here is because even though this applies a lot of torque, it applies it in short bursts and it won't really put a lot of stress on any of the components. I've got a rag wedged in here so the gears won't move. I don't think it could have gone any quicker than that. Back to the house. Okay, we're back here at my spacious workstation. This nut is loose, so the next thing to do is turn this over on its side and attempt to remove these case screws. Hopefully, they will behave. It's going to be a good day. I know it already. Lots of times when you're loosening screws in a manner like this, where they're all torqued down, holding something together, the last couple of screws are going to be the most difficult to remove because they're still torqued down and holding all of the pressure that was released when all of these others were cracked loose. All of the screws are completely loosened, so it's time to try to break this thing apart. I better remove this base gasket though. I don't want to break it in half. I might reuse it. The budget's getting tight on this thing. Do you know how much I'm into this motorcycle, Jennifer? I don't. More than your new Nintendo Switch. Oh. And the game. Oh. That's okay though. It's for Junior. And the viewers. I might and, write it. And, and <laughs> who wants to see that? Who wants to see that? <laughs> I don't have my rubber mallet, so we've got the 2x4 standby. Nothing yet. It's, it's an oyster shell. Good for 100 meters, probably. Oh, a handy pry place. Did you see that? Smooth as butter. We've got some space here, but it's still tight over here. When you pull these apart, it's important to keep everything straight. I'm feeling some resistance, like perhaps 
I wonder if I need to remove this clip. Snap ring pliers, not here. Now watch closely as this goes sailing into space. I'm thinking perhaps this shaft needs to be pulled all the way through for this to come apart. I retained the retainer. Okay. Still feels like it's being held together by something in this area. This is being kind of difficult and rather than trying to force it apart, I've dug into it a little bit more. I pulled off the clutch along with a spring that went kind of behind here. As I try to pull this case apart from the one underneath, this Kickstarter gear is getting hung up on this oil injection pump drive gear. So I'll pull off this clip and take off this assembly and hopefully everything will slide apart like it's supposed to. And this is an exercise in luck. I complain about it, but really this is how I did it when I was 12 years old, trying to rebuild an engine in the dirt with a pair of pliers and a wood block. I was hoping that taking this apart there. would be a snap. So I think it's up out of its little valley there now. So hopefully I can pull this, yep. Uh. <laughs> oh! oh! A clingy little thing. I'm of course keeping track of where all these parts go. So now this pulls out. I'm not sure if what I just did was necessary, but I did it. I think it was, look, it's coming right out. Now what is holding you up now? Perfect. Oh, there you go. Did you see where this goes? No. It's not my wedding ring. So now, that case is off. Now this side is pretty stuck. In the beginning, man repaired PW50 engines. There she is. The old wood block wasn't quite enough. These are really useful things to have. So this thing's out. What is that? This is the crankshaft and piston assembly. This is the core of the engine. Oh. Jennifer and anyone out there who didn't know, as the piston gets forced down by fire, bang, it turns the crankshaft. It keeps the momentum long enough to push the piston back up, and then bang, it happens all over again. And this is a two cycle engine. The beauty of the two cycle engine is that every time the piston comes up, bang, bang. You understand, I don't wanna drop it. A four cycle engine is a little bit different. It does not fire with every turn of the crankshaft. It's one in every four turns. Bang exhaust, intake, compression again, bang! That's only every other. Four cycle engine fires every other revolution. Maybe that should be the two cycle engine. Four separate cycles. Up, not, down, up, down. Not necessarily four revolutions. The four cycles are what I'm saying. Count them down with me. Combustion. One. one. Exhaust. Two. two. Intake. Three. three. Compression. Four. four. Combustion all over again. Okay. I'm not embarrassed. I never thought about it before. Thanks for watching.